Dr. John Zink, we're talking about 7-keto. Can you talk about some of the clinical trials and the things that you've done to, uh, to show that it's safe for us to use? Yeah, I'd be happy to. That's one thing that sets 7-keto apart from a lot of uh, uh, weight loss supplements, even dietary supplements in general. Before we even sold this compound, we did um, a phase one safety and pharmacokinetic study, which is a clinical trial uh, in healthy volunteers to see how it's tolerated, check for hormone levels, check for side effects in their lab work. Uh, then we did a pharmacokinetic analysis where we drew blood in these people. And so we basically can track their absorption and excretion of the compound. So it's one of the few dietary supplements out there where you can actually know what the half-life is. You can know how long it takes to get the peak plasma levels. You know what those peak plasma levels are. So it helps me as a physician and a, a, a researcher that works with this compound all the time to design really good trials based on those numbers. So that was the first clinical trial we did. We found that, and we knew from the previous research that it could actually have this thermogenic effect. So in, about in the late 90s, we did our first weight loss trial. Okay. We actually now have two published clinical weight loss trials, both of which confirm the other's results. So these were both randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trials, uh, parallel designs where we have an active treatment group and a placebo group. And we're blinded. The researchers are blinded. We don't know who's who. Mm. Uh, we had similar numbers of patients in each one, roughly a total of 30. These were all overweight patients in their mid to late 40s, men and women. I think our average body mass index was right around 32. So they were most of them in the obese category. And we tested them over an eight-week period. The dose of 7-keto was our usual, which is 100 milligrams twice a day or 200 milligrams a day. So at the end of the study, we found that we definitely did see a statistically significant difference in body weight and in body fat. And what we found was that in both studies, the patients that were on 7-keto, in addition to the 1,800-calorie diet and a little exercise, they walked like three times a week for 30 minutes, that the 7-keto treatment group uh, had that particular treatment group losing three times more weight mm -hmm. and fat than the group that took the placebo and were on the same diet and the same exercise program. In addition to that, we found out that 80% of the weight that they did lose was body fat. So instead of our usual weight loss trial, where it's made closer to 50-50, we're actually preser preserving muscle mass or fat-free mass. And so they're actually you know, doing what we thought they would do, and that's mm -hmm. burn stored fat rather than uh, you know, using muscle as an energy source. So both of those trials have been published in scientific journals. Um, they've been reviewed by my peers and found to be accurate and complete and show uh, something that should be known by the scientific community. So 7-keto, so based on these trials and, and the success you've had, is safe to you. Yeah. I mean, this is something that, you know, not like ephedra or things like that, but this is something that, we can, that can really benefit us if we, if we put in the work <laughs> Absolutely. too. Absolutely. For sure, very safe. Mm -hmm. and, and um, I'm very confident when I say that because we've done actually 10 clinical trials. Some of those were weight loss, some are for other indications with 7-keto at varying doses and controlled clinical trials looking for problems in lab tests, never seen them, always well tolerated, no side effects. So I'm confident when I say that I know it's a, a safe and I know it's effective too. I mean, it's pretty rare that you have two published clinical weight loss trials with similar designs that actually mm -hmm. confirm the other's results. That means you got it right. The thing must actually work. And you talked earlier about it, that it that, uh, doesn't affect hormone levels. How important is that for uh, us as we get older when some people are taking uh, hormone replacement therapy? And, and this is something that certainly we can then integrate without affecting that too, right? Yeah, that's the one nice thing about it. I mean, that's where you might have a problem with using DHEA mm -hmm. as a weight loss supplement. Because if you have women on uh, hormone replacement therapy or men on testosterone for whatever reason, you could complicate the side effects from the drugs they're getting from their doctor. So 7-keto doesn't have any of those effects, so we don't have to worry about those types of interactions. And speaking of interactions, we've, we haven't uh, had any interactions that we know of with uh, other existing drugs or supplements. 7-keto uh, does look a lot like DHEA, and DHEA has an ability to inhibit platelet aggregation like aspirin does. That's why they okay. use it for heart attacks. Sure. So there's a chance that 7-keto might have that same ability to inhibit platelet aggregation, which for patients that are on Coumadin or other blood thinners could put them at risk for bleeding. So we you know, have that uh, warning available just so people know.